Welcome to The Author Show, where we feature new authors and books from fiction to self-help and everything in between. You'll find it all at theauthorshow.com. That's theauthorshow.com. And now let the show begin. Hello and welcome back to the show. This is your host, Don McCauley. Today we're welcoming the program author Alan Stedham, and he is the author of Mindfire. Alan, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Don. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. I am a new author. I just published two books this year. Mindfire is the first book. I am from Texas, and I'm really excited about this book and to talk about it today. So tell us about your book. So Mindfire is about a young woman named Leah. It's Christian fiction. It is about a young woman named Leah who discovers that she has superpowers. She can lift things with her thoughts or she can set them on fire. And she wonders why this happens to her. Well, she finds out that her father used to be a superhero and her biological mother, who she's never met, is a supervillain. And so she's got to find her place in life, and she doesn't know what's going on. She's trying to figure this out. It's not your normal superhero book because she's not trying to be a superhero. She's trying to figure out what's going on. So basically, there's two stories in one. There's a story with the superheroes in the past, and then there's what's going on in the present with Leia. And it all comes together and makes this story called Mindfire. So who did you write your book for specifically? Who's your target audience? I target the new adult audience and primarily females 18 to 30 years old, say probably males from teenage to middle 30s. And a lot of that goes around the the central character being in that age range. It's uh, easier to relate to. And then also I aim this for people that might not be Christian. This is a Christian fiction book, but it's not a beat you over the head type of book. It's, It's meant to reach people and share this message with them. So what is the central message in the book? The central message of the book is power alone does not make a hero or villain. Character is really what makes the difference here. You decide what kind of person you're going to be. In this book, Leia is deciding who she's going to be. But it also is a central theme that applies to all the characters. Basically, everybody gets tested under this mantra, whether they have powers or don't have powers, whether they're good guys, whether they're bad guys. They all are basically figuring out who they are under these circumstances. If you had to choose, what would you say is the single most important idea you're sharing in your book that's really going to add value to the reader's life? I would say that the main message is that God loves us and that he's a God of redemption. This is a redemption story, and it's not just a redemption for one character. Everybody gets a chance, but will they take that chance? You know, we're all human. We all make mistakes, but God loves us, and that's the central message. So if you compare your book with any book out there we might already be familiar with, which book would it be and why? Well, I would say that in general, okay, I'm I'm a Star Trek guy, so I really look at a lot of the stories. So there was there was a Star Trek book out there called A Singular Destiny by Keith DeCandido. And basically in a nutshell, the characters in here, you don't have to know the characters, you don't have to know the stories and stuff, but everybody has to deal with tragedy and they have to deal with who are they going to be after these Things happen that that rock their lives. Basically, uh, the Borg, uh, the enemy, and they come in, they do a bunch of damage, and so people have to pick up their lives. And in Mindfire, there's tragedy that happens, and people have to pick up their lives afterwards and decide, who am I going to be? So Star Trek does that a lot in their stories. They show this character goes through this or that, and how do they deal with it? And I think that's a really important thing to tap into. I think that readers will relate to that aspect of humanizing the characters when they have to deal with things because people have to deal with things in real life. We, we all have to deal with things and that's what happens here. And so I think that readers will get a lot out of that. What inspired you to write Mind Fire? Well, there is National Novel Writing Month, which happens every year. And in 2013, I decided to make a go at it. And I'd written comics before that, but I'd never written a novel. And so I decided to take a shot at this and take stuff from the comics and 
put it into a novel. And so National Novel Writing Month, you're to do a 50,000 word novel, at least a first draft within one month. And so that's what I did. I took these story elements and I put them into a novel to have that first draft and I got done within three weeks. And so that eventually turned into what we've got here with Mindfire. How does comic book writing differ from novel writing? Well, with comic book writing, you're basically, you're doing a lot of dialogue. There's, there's dialogue and plot, but the artist is drawing the pictures and stuff. Whereas with a novel, the writer has to put everything into the words. And so when the reader gets the story and they read it, they need to see what's going on with the words painting the picture for them. So that's the biggest difference is that in comics, you could just, read through the pages and you, you see everything with the art and everything. And in the story, you've got those words painting that picture for you. So in your opinion, what sets Mindfire apart from other superhero novels? Well, I would say that Mindfire is not your traditional superhero novel. It is more about uh, these characters. It's almost a psychological look at these characters and what they're going through. Most superhero stories have the capes and they have the masks and the secret identities and either you've got something endangering the world or you've got a evil supervillain who's trying to gain power or something. Here it's not about that. Everybody's kind of in the same mess trying to figure out what's going on. There's a, a central set of events that set the stage for the whole story for the reader. And so these characters, whether they're good guys, whether they're bad guys, whether they've got powers, whether they don't, everybody's having to deal with these events that happen within the story. So the reader gets pulled in and gets to kind of see both sides. They get to see what's going on with the good guys, what's going on with the bad guys, and how the people who have powers are just as important as the people who don't have powers. So it, it's very different in that regard that you've got everybody's kind of on an even playing field here, as opposed to a lot of superhero stories put the people with the superpowers way above the people who don't have the superpowers and nobody can relate and everything. Here, everybody is relatable for the reader. So what do you think makes for a good Christian novel? Well, I think the most important thing is that it not bang you over the head with the message. I think that the reader needs to be able to relate to the story. People will read Christian fiction if it's inviting, if it's got something for them. Mindfire has something for the reader. It's got this compelling story. It shows the dark elements of life. But it also shows an alternative to that. It shows that, yeah, we can try and solve these things on our own, but inevitably we fail. And so people want a solution. They want hope. And Mindfire offers hope. And that's what we're looking for in a Christian story, is something that offers hope, that shows what God's got for you, what Jesus has for you. And all that comes back to the Bible, all that comes back to what salvation is. And so the reader's going to get a chance to see this perspective of what salvation means to these characters when they get that opportunity for it and how they go through this journey to get there. And I think that makes for good Christian fiction. It doesn't just hand it to you on a platter. It lets you see why these characters need this and who takes advantage of it, who doesn't take advantage of it, who needs it, everybody needs it. So I think that that makes it relatable for the reader. Did your environment or upbringing play any major role in your writing? I would say that it did, yes, because I went through a lot of bullying when I was a kid, a lot of people did, but basically as a result of having a medical condition that made it so I couldn't play sports very well. I got a lot of bullying related to sports from other boys and stuff. So I went away from all that and I kind of disliked sports for a while. I threw myself into art. I threw myself into doing the comics. And so from the comics sprung up the writing and then from that eventually became the novel writing. So yeah, that played a big part in me becoming who I am and what I do. What can you tell us about your genre and why you prefer to write in that genre? Well, I prefer Christian fiction and specifically more fantasy-based. 
with Mindfire, it's a superhero novel, and that is a subgenre of fantasy. But I also like to do science fantasy, and I'm even looking at uh, some other forms uh, like steampunk and science fiction down the road. So I, I prefer that because there's a lot of world building in it. And I think that that gives the writer and the reader an opportunity to see a rich environment that hopefully hasn't been seen before. I really like to create a world and characters that are inviting to the reader that makes you want to to come in and see what these people are about, see what's going on here. And I I think that's really important for the reader. I think that they will enjoy uh, what I've created. And I think that this genre gives me a unique opportunity to do that for them. What's been your most rewarding experience since publishing your book? Well, I would say recently I got the opportunity to have a book signing at Barnes & Noble, and that was really awesome. First of all, the people there were great, both the customers and the people working at Barnes & Noble, and uh, just getting the opportunity to go there with my wife and meet people and talk to them about uh, both Mindfire and another of my books, uh, Jordan's World, and just to get a chance to meet people and feel welcome. It, It really made me feel like the author that I am, and it also gave me a chance to connect with readers, and that was really awesome, and I really enjoyed that, and I hope to get more opportunities like that. So it's very rewarding. How would you describe your writing style? I would say that my writing style is intense. (laughs) I really like to get the emotional aspects. I like to build up the story and I love twists. So what you'll get is you'll, you'll get a detailed story. You'll get a little bit of action, a little bit of romance. You'll get a little bit of these elements that build up towards the Christian story, but you'll get some twists. So it's not going to be your run of the mill story. It's going to be something that really pulls you in and hooks you and From the feedback I've had from people, that's very rewarding. They enjoy that. So it's exciting. It's fun. It's really gripping in places. I don't shy away from hard elements in order to show, again, later on that hope that is in there. So it's a very exciting style. It's a very enjoyable style. And I think that readers will really enjoy that. Who or what would you say influenced your writing the most? Hmm. I would say probably probably Star Trek. I really, for, for about 10 years, I only read Star Trek novels. And I, I grew up on Star Trek. I'm, I'm a Star Trek guy. And a lot of people are. So basically, it was a huge influence on me. Writers like Dayton Ward and uh, David Mack and, and others like that really helped me to take what I'd seen on the screen, what, what everybody's seen on the screen with, with Star Trek, whether it's the original show or any of the other shows, and put it out there in a way that pulled me in and showed me some of that excitement and took me into that universe of Star Trek. So that was a huge influence on me, but I also decided I didn't want to write Star Trek. First of all, it's very hard to break into that, but also I wanted to create my own stories. And even though it was a huge influence on me, and I will probably always love Star Trek, I decided to make it my own. So that was my big influence. In your opinion, who should buy your book? Well, I think that uh, 18 to 30-year-old females should buy my book. I think that probably teen to mid-30s and older men should buy my book. I think that people who have no spiritual background should buy it. I think that people who are curious about Christian fiction, but maybe they haven't tried it before, I think they should try it out. And I think people who have kind of gotten tired of quote unquote run of the mill Christian fiction should come and, and read Mindfire because it's got something for them. It's different than what's out there. And I think that readers will really appreciate the difference in Mindfire. Could you spell your name for us, please? Allen, A L L E N, Stedham, S T E A D H A M. This has been just great. Our guest today has been Alan Stedham, and he is the author of Mind Fire. Alan, thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me. 
This is Don McCauley wrapping up another edition of The Author Show. The Author Show podcast can be accessed at any time by visiting theauthorshow.com. Selected interviews can also be found on major podcasting platforms like Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Spotify, and many more. If you're an author who would like to be featured, just visit theauthorshow.com, complete the interview request form, and we may contact you. Marketing is seldom easy for authors, and The Author Show is a great way to promote your work worldwide using a high-quality interview that can make a real impact. Check us daily as we continue to introduce wonderful authors of very interesting books on The Author Show. Thanks for listening to The Author Show. Find out more about authors and their work at theauthorsshow.com. Theauthorsshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show.